Good morning, everybody, and welcome to HG Infra Engineering Limited earnings call to discuss the Q3 and nine-month FY24 results. We have on the call Mr. Harendra Singh, Chairman and Managing Director, and Mr. Rajiv Mishra, Chief Financial Officer. We must remind you that the discussion on today's call may include certain forward-looking statements and must be therefore viewed in conjunction with the risks that the company faces. May I now request Mr. Harendra Singh to take us through the company's business outlook and performance, subsequent to which we will open the floor for Q&A. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Sana. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the earnings conference call of HG Infra Engineering Limited. We are delighted to discuss the key milestones of our quarterly and nine-month financial performance, other accounts and accomplishments, and for future vision. The trust, we trust you got the chance to examine our investors' presentation and the financial results. Let me start with a brief overview of the infrastructure outlook and the latest budget updates. The Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways has increased, uh, received increase of funding 2.7%, totaling around 2.78 lakh crore rupees for 24-25, out of which 1.6 8 lakh crore is designated for to NHA for development of national highway corridors. The government plans to accelerate new project award in the upcoming months and also reviving built operate transfer model with 54 projects worth over 2.2 lakh crores. Additionally, there is a shift from Bharatmala Pariyojana to Vision 2047 initiative, a more ambitious plan aiming to construct 30,000 to 35,000 kilometers of access control highways and 50,000 kilometers of high-speed corridors before India's 100th independence anniversary in 2047. In the railway sector, the interim budget 2024 has EMR, Rs. 2.55 lakh crores, sustaining its capital expenditure momentum compared to the Rs. 2.41 lakh, uh, lakh crores allocated in 23-24. Indian Railways and SARS uh, envisage a substantial 4.2 trillion plan to multi-track seven high-speed density corridors spanning 10,969 kilometers over the next decade. Under the Ambedwala station scheme, the government has planned to remodel 13, uh, 1,309 stations by 2030. HG Infra has taken this as an opportunity considering new bidding in various station projects and already acquired Kanpur railway station. We aim to secure high-value projects in this sector. Recognizing opportunities in different sectors, we have actively pursued bids to broaden our order books. Let me start the journey of this quarter and give you the glimpse of operational highlights first. As of December 2023, our order book stood at Rs. 9,626 crore, diversified across 11 states. Out of the total order book, EPC constitutes 51%. HAM constitutes 37% and railway and metro contributes remaining 12%. Talking of the ongoing projects, the execution progress on various EPP projects is as follows. The Ganga Expressway project is progressing well and has reached a completion milestone of approximately 42.1%. In the daily UER project, substantial progress has been achieved and standing at around 84.8%. It is anticipated to be completed by March 24. Neil Manga Tungur project is advancing smoothly and has attained an execution status of 19.1%. Karnal Ring Road project has achieved 10% completion and progress is well accelerated in the next few months as all initial impediments in the progress uh, has been addressed. The progress of all hand projects is also running as per the planned schedule. The update is there. The Raipur Vishakapatnam OD5 project has progressed to 54.8%. Raipur Vishakapatnam OD6 project is currently at 62.4% completion. The Raipur Vishakapatnam AB1 project has achieved a completion status of 61.3%. In the Dhamal Devrapalli project, package 1 has progressed uh, 33.6%, while package 2 is uh, at 38.4%. Let's dive into the progress of our railway projects. The DMRC Metro project has achieved a completion of 36.7%, with execution progressing smoothly and in line with the expected timelines. The Bilaspur Emanuel Pradesh Railway project under RV Mill, 
though it uh, delayed a, a bit initially because of extensive rains in Himachal, is now progressing well. The Kanpur Central Railway Project, uh, Railway Station Project, which uh, North Central Railways has reached a completion of 1.2%, just recently started. Let me now share other significant updates of quarter 3 of FY24. The appointed date for Kanpur Central Railway Station was received on 16th of October 23. The PCOD of Maharashtra Package 7 and Rewadi Bypass were received with platform 29 Feb 2020 and 25 May 2023, respectively. COD of Rewadi Atiri Mandi was received with the platform 31st November 2021. Financial closure of Varanasi Rashi Kolkata Package 10 and 13 was declared on 23rd November 23 and 20th November 23, respectively. In terms of the financial highlights of this quarter, we are happy to share, considering our financial performance and robust growth story, the outlook on the long-term rating has been revised from stable to positive. The rating committee of ICRA has reaffirmed the long-term rating at AA- minus and the short-term rating as A1+. Plus. Our financial numbers of last quarter has been satisfactory. At the federal level, our total revenue for nine months FY24 has reached 3,487 crore, marking an 18.3% year-on-year increase from Rs. 2,949 crore in nine months FY23. EBITDA uh, amounted to Rs. 557 crore in nine months FY24, resulting in an EBITDA margin of 16%, compared to Rs. 473 crore, and a fixed volume margin in nine months of FI23. Perhaps for nine months, FI24 stood at 386 crore, with a profit margin of 11.1%, in contrast to 274 crore, and a margin of 9.3% of nine months FI23. In quarter three FI24, standalone revenue reached Rs. 1,346 crore, indicating a significant 19% year-on-year growth from Rs. 1,131 crore in quarter 3 FY23. Standard EBITDA for quarter 3 FY24 was Rs. 214 crore, reflecting a year-on-year growth of 13.2%. The PAT and the PAT margin for quarter 3 FY24 stood at Rs. 205 crore and 15.3% respectively. Compared to rupees, that, was, that is compared to Rs. 111 crore fees, and 9.9%. Regarding the company's debt position, on a standard basis, the gross debt amounting to Rs. 470 crore, including the working capital debt of Rs. 64 crore, rupees, term loan, current maturity, and trade limit totaling, 340, totaling, totaling to 341 crores, along with the entity of 65 crores. Moving on to the consolidated numbers, in nine months FY24, the revenue surged to Rs. 370 crore, indicating an 18.9% year on increase from Rs. 3087 crore in nine months FY23. EBITDA reached Rs. 729 crore, resulting in an EBITDA margin of 19.9% compared to 599 crore and a 19.4% margin in nine months FY23. Bad for nine months FI24 stood at Rs. 349 crore, with a profit margin of 9.5%, as compared to 322 crore, a 10.4% margin in nine months FI23. Concerning the company's debt position at the consolidated level, the gross debt amounting to Rs. 1,356 crore. The total equity requirement for nine HAM projects is estimated to be Rs. 1,331 crore, until FY26, as of December 23, rupees 604 crores has already been infused, and there is a projection infusion of rupees 74 crores in FY24. Let me now give updates on the key developments on the monetization progress of four assets. Pursuant to entering the share purchase agreement on 3rd May 2023, we have finally achieved the milestone of completion of first tranche sale of three SPVs including Gurgaon Sona, Vewadi Ateli, and Ateli Nardong. 100% shares of these companies have been transferred on 21st November 2023 from HG Infra to Highway Infrastructures Trust. And consideration has been received against the share transfer. As per SPA, total consideration offered was Rs. 531 crore for all the four SPVs. Out of that, agreed consideration for first tranche of these SPVs 
was rupees 405 crore, against which the final total conservation has been closed for rupees 375.13 crore. Total conservation includes 313.076 against equity and 62.06 crore against subordinate debt. Entire conservation has been received except holdback of rupees 59.56 crore being transferred in an, in an exco account, which will be released on receipt of approval of, for GST change in law on NVT payments from the authority. And the same is expected to be received by March 24. We would further, uh, we further would like to inform the variation in final consideration was majorly due to change in the price escalation amount on account of impact of change in law, a change in CPI guidelines. Because of this change, there was a negative impact of around 13.29 crore on the consideration value of these three SPV companies. However, the impact is positive in second branch of fourth SPV with 2.87 crore. Additionally, during the period before closing of transaction within the agreed valuation date, unsecured loan of rupees 16.7 crore rupees was refunded back to the promoter company, which was provided to SPV during the construction period as interim arrangement in general course of business. However, in Rewadi Bypass, we would like to receive rupees 140 odd crore rupees against consideration of rupees 126 crore as per the SPA. Thus, overall consideration remains unaffected. Also, we would like to update that for second tranche of fourth SPV, that is Rewadi Bypass, where PCOD declared with effect on 25th of May 23. Accordingly, we have applied for the issuance of NOC from the authority and lenders for the change in shareholding. Final NOC is anticipated shortly, and we are expecting to complete the second tranche by March 24. On completion of first tranche transaction in November 23, rupees 106.74 crore of total capital gain has been recognized, which attracts a tax of rupees 16.09 crore as per the income tax provision for the first tranche. Three SPVs due to which the overall current component has increased for this period. Let me now touch upon the future guidance. After the lukewarm awarding this financial year till now, we are expecting a aggressive bidding in the next two months, which will give us the opportunity to augment our order book. To date, LG Infine bidded for 52 tender worth 30,572 crore until January 24. Among these three, uh, among these three tenders were awarded, totaling 1,199 crore, including projects of NTPC, Central Railway project of Dhule to Nardana, and South Central Railway project of Aurangabad to Ankai Package 9. Both the railway projects have been awarded in the month of 24. I am hopeful after the addition of two railway projects in the month of January 24, we would further add 5,000 odd crores more projects in the remaining part of this financial year, taking total order addition during the year to around 6,000 crores. For future bidding, LG Infra Engineering also plans to bid on about eight more railway projects, that is around 6,000 crores in this financial year. We are also targeting high-value railway projects as invited by Haryana Orbital Rail Corporation to further diversify our order. We have started preparatory work of analyzing cost in and doing preliminary discussions with diversification in solar sector also to propel our way forward. Regarding the revenue guidance in this nine months, we have attained the revenue of Rs. 3,487 crores and we would like to assure all our stakeholders that this year we would be achieving will be achieving 17 to 20% growth in revenue compared to last year, maintaining a margin of 15.5% 60% slab. I, would, I want to ensure our shareholders and the financial partners that the company is exercising prudence and vigilance to enhance our growth narrative, demonstrating persistence in seizing forthcoming growth capacity soon. We are meticulously focused on enhancing our operational efficiency and execution capacity to boost both our data and fat margins. Digital transformation holds the primary spot of our agenda, encompassing automation in our, power, our all plant and machinery operation at various other verticals. The strategic move is poised to contribute significant value to our financial indicators, fostering a seamless and transparent real-time working environment. That concludes my update, and now I, the floor is open for question and answers. 
Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Alok Deora from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir, and uh, congratulations on pretty decent numbers and uh, execution improvement. Uh, sir, uh, just uh, again on the, um, you although you gave a, a pretty detailed opening remark, but just on the order flow, because, uh, you know, we are already clocking nearly uh, a run rate of 5,000 crore annual revenue, and order book is uh, at around two times now. So uh, how many projects we have bid now where bids are yet to be opened? And uh, you also mentioned that there is a pretty aggressive bidding which will happen in the, uh, you know, uh, in the next couple of months. So what's the realistic number we could look at? Because most of the companies are talking are betting on these next couple of months to kind of, you know, uh, get the order in flow in place. Yeah, sure. I uh, say almost uh, 16 bids are there. They are yet uh, the results are yet to be declared, and this is um, uh, totaling about 14,000 crore. Uh, apart from this, as we have seen that in February and March, before prior to the model code of conduct imposed, likely that the awarding at NHI, uh, Ministry, and uh, MSRDC and several railway projects they are on the card, where we are also betting upon it. And definitely it looks like that uh, during the next two years, quite uh, a good pace of awarding would be done. And it's uh, almost uh, 70,000 odd crore rupees, or rather 60,000 to 70,000 in MSRDC, the only BC projects, and uh, at, uh, around 50,000 crores plus at NHEI, and some 40,000 odd crores at, from the most ministry. So these are the highway projects which I am talking, other than the railway projects are also there, so which we believe that definitely 25,000 odd crores of railway projects is likely to be awarded. Sure, and I think uh, in your uh, in your comments you mentioned about you bidding a lot of these railway projects. So, what what is the expected margins there? Because railway margins would uh, be lower than this 15, 16 percent margin which you make in the road projects. So, what is the margin profile would be there for those projects? So we are keeping the same thing, to say, if you are talking of the Dule project, there is almost uh, the similar kind of a project as highway, say nothing of electrification or s &P. So we are keeping the same margins uh, as we are doing in highway. Definitely it can be uh, a one of, uh, uh, not more than 1% because in a highway EPC project we are keeping ourselves at about say 13% range that we are keeping for them. Ham definitely we are uh, targeting about 18-19% as uh, we have done in the past. So this is how we are uh, looking at uh, any future railway project to be bid it. Uh, got it, sir. Uh, that's all from my side. Thank you and all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Shravan Shah from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you and uh, congrats on a decent set of numbers. Uh, so just to uh, dwell upon that, so uh, till now uh, the the uh, uh, railway orders, the EPC value for us is uh, 1200 odd crore that we have received. Uh, the recent orders which we have received? Yes, sir. So net of GST will be around 1100. Okay, net of GST. So till now the order inflow for us is 1100 odd crore, and for full year, so by next two months we are looking at to uh, the uh, uh, further 5000 odd crore. So total would be a 6000 odd crore that we are looking at. Yeah. So in this uh, uh, 5000 odd crore, uh, a railway would be how much uh, uh, more we are looking at? 
So we cannot just see that we already have bidded for uh, almost uh, the 14,000 odd crores of bid yet to be awarded. In this 10,000 crores are all railway projects, which we expect that definitely one or two projects from railway is likely to be there out of the 5,000 expected during the balance part of the year. Okay, so this uh, uh, 10,000 uh, 10, crore uh, railway project, so these are uh, closer to 1,000 crore each kind of a project? No, it's not typically the same. It is 500 to 700 and 1,000 or even 1,200, 1,300 also. Okay, okay. Uh, got it. So, uh, 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 for, the, for the full year, uh, you mentioned 17 to 20 percent, so slightly maybe a lower uh, revenue that we are looking at uh, versus a previously 5,400 crore. Uh, so for next year, uh, in terms of uh, 6,000, 6,200 crore revenue that we were looking at, so will are we are we able to maintain the same uh, guidance for FR26? So for the current year, definitely because of the very uh, say weather condition and the uh, say erratic monsoon. So this is why the shortfall has been and the Charkhand project, which we were supposed uh, to, uh, looking at this quantity date of package 13, which is yet not uh, clarified as far as model code of order likely to be imposed. So this is why the shortfall of our 200 or crore rupees likely to be there. But definitely we are keeping uh, uh, the rate intact for the financial year 25 with 6,000 or crore rupees. Okay, okay, got it. So now these two appointed date, uh, package 13 and package 10, so uh, when can we expect uh, appointed date? So looking to the current scenario of uh, Jharkhand, the state government, uh, as well as the model code of contract, uh, we believe that till May definitely no chance is there. And uh, we also would not be taking this risk uh, prior to this. Uh, only one project which we definitely would be looking at by June, appointed date can be there. The second project, uh, as I am expecting, that post monsoon uh, that would be declared. Uh, so package 13 will be by June. Yeah. A and uh, package 10 will be up uh, uh, October November. Not November, rather August onwards, say sometime in September. Okay. Okay. Got it. Uh, uh, sir, you mentioned uh, significant uh, opportunities uh, uh, in railway, MORS, NHI, MSR, DC, uh, DC. So, uh, so out of total, how much are we planning to uh, bid? If you can broadly help us, then it would be a great. So, thirty odd thousand crore that we will we'll be bidding. Roughly, there are sixty thousand crores of odd bids which we are uh, aiming at to be bidded in these three organisations. Okay, okay, got it. Uh, sir, couple of data points on the on the balance sheet side. Uh, so first is uh, retention money, the uh, uh, unbilled revenue, mobilization advance. The mobilization advance is uh, uh, three hundred eight crore rupees. To be very specific, and uh, the total debtor is eight hundred twenty five, including the retention and uh, deposits, other deposits. And that is, if we can, we want the breakup. NHI is around the 140 crore rupees. SPV is at about 250 crore. Adani 300 or crore rupees, as we have done say, significantly good in month of December. Uh, that is the same uh, for the month of December only. And others are very negligible at the 135 crore rupees. Unbuilt definitely uh, around 700 crore rupees, and uh, the 700 crore is unbuilt of uh, 250 from NHI. And Adani is very uh, negligible of 100 crore rupees. Uh, the SPV again is 300 or crore rupees. And the remaining others. Okay, uh, sir. Uh, total data you you uh, out of that uh, retention money is how much? Retention money is around 114 crore, 115 crore rupees. 115. Uh, and total inventory and total data value is how much? The inventory is one high. It is 341 crore rupees. Uh, what are you talking about? Uh, uh, total data. Uh, the data we have already data. discussed. Eight hundred twenty-five. Eight twenty-five and payables, sir. Payables. Uh, uh, payables. Uh, payables. Sorry. Payables, sir. Creditors. Creditors, na? Yes, yes sir. Uh, Creditors around six hundred crore. Six hundred crore. Okay, so uh, and just as a clarification, okay, okay, uh, I was taking the point off. Okay, no issues. Thank you.
A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nikhil Abhyankar from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So my question was broadly regarding, we have seen that uh, the piece of capex increase for NHU has reduced as well as for railways. And going forward, maybe uh, to reduce the fiscal deficit, the capex might reduce as well. So do you expect higher share of what going forward, say in the next three to five years? And how will we uh, try to participate in that opportunity? Sorry, I uh, couldn't understand your uh Please, you can uh, repeat it. Sir. Sure. So right now, uh, as compared to HAM and EPC, going forward, there might be higher share of port uh, projects okay, okay. from NHI. Correct, uh, uh, correct. So definitely NHI having, uh, say, uh, looking to the just response of many of the lenders as well as concessionaires, so where the TOT they could uh, monetize. So looking into that, they have actually has figured out some 50 plus project of 2, 2 lakh crore rupees on bot model, and uh, where certain concession ag modified, uh, concession agreements has been modified, which is uh, quite friendly, which we believe is a positive move, and uh, how, I don't know how it uh, will definitely react on uh, actual bidding being or ra rather than awarding. But then definitely uh, looking to this opportunity, and we are working with Adani, uh, uh, we have already worked with IRB, and uh, Adani and IRB, they are the one who are very, uh, say, uh, always uh, try to uh, take such kind of a projects. And uh, uh, apart from this, Q and uh, say one or two uh, compressors, they are also approaching us. So they are also uh, approaching G as an EPC uh, player to them. So with that, I think uh, this is a possibility. If definitely with the government's uh, stand uh, likely to come, we would not be uh, at a uh, say, uh, risk. We would be again looking into such a possibility uh, from the uh, perspective as an EPC to the developers. Okay, so we are not looking to participate directly. Uh, we will be taking trial of one or two, not with very aggression, with very, uh, say, home uh, numbers, keeping all of oh, Understood. And sir, uh, what, uh, if, uh, what will be the margins on this profile? Usually, what is the margin for board projects as compared to ham and ETC projects? Well, the board projects and ham projects, they are all same. Yes, for EPC yeah. is concerned. If you talk of the development... Right. So the mm -hmm. project being taken by the concessioner, they do have definitely consideration in toll risk is there or in hand there is no risk as such. So there is their calculation. The, 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 the okay. calculation is different. Okay, sure. Thank you, sir. That's all from me, sir. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Jitain Rushi from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. Congratulations on good set of numbers. So my first question is on the D. Uh, so as you said, what I understand is the uh, equity. Uh, a bit, lo bit louder. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me now? Okay. Is it loud now? Hello. Yeah, yeah. Now it's okay. Yeah. So my question was on the equity investment in the three hand project in which we have completed our monetization. So I'm assuming uh, we have invested around almost 268 crores against which we were supposed to receive 405 crores, which you said, but we have received 375 crores. And we, so, sir, in this 375 crores, six, uh, 59, so almost 60 crores is still pending, right, sir? Yeah. Uh, this 60 crores is related to GST uh, for the change in law, which you will receive by end of month once NHI approves it. That is what my understanding is, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, sir, uh, we have made a capital gain of almost 106.106107 crore. Uh, Why? Uh, that is in the standalone. Uh, that is that is correct, right? Because uh, overall you said 11617 crore, which is including the control number, standalone plus one. Hello. Yeah, yeah, quite right. So, sir. Uh, so, uh, what was, uh, you said some negotiation is going on, uh, so what is that negotiation, like, uh, which has impacted the valuation? So, what what is the reason of the impact in the valuation in the first three projects? So, see, this is the entire uh, uh, deal has been for all four projects. So, individual projects do not have uh, any impact on it. 
looking to that say i already have addressed uh, like uh, the because of the cpi to uh, say so this is a consumer price index where the later on uh, uh, guidelines being issued by rha for calculation of the uh, price index Mm. Price escalation rather. So there is an impact of about 13 crore rupees, which is the net impact of 10 crore rupees, taking consideration of Rewari bypass as well. So net is 10 crore rupees, but in Rewari bypass, looking to the equity which we have invested and the likely uh, proceeds or likely uh, NVT which we will be getting uh, in next 15 years, with all consideration, this 126 crore rupees initially being considered in this overall valuation of 531, where it has now, it would be uh, 140 plus. So this is 13 crore rupees plus in that particular project. So overall, the overall 531 crore rupees are intact. So we are not going to lose anything out of that. It's a matter of first tranche or second tranche. And having discussed that, definitely the uh, the capital gain which we have considered in this uh, uh, AG standalone and the consolidation which we have, we are seeing that these three projects where certain discounting is to be done. Uh, uh, in that uh, tax, uh, in the, in, in the uh, profit margins, which actually has impacted the console number. Okay, so that's the balance number in the console number. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, so, any effects uh, for nine months and, and what is the guidance for full year FY24-25? And what is the balance equity breakup if you can give us, like you said, for 74 crore in Q4 this year? And what about the balance? Six zero four per half is uh, you know, broken down after the six zero four which you have invested so far. So post this uh, the say nine the out of this thirty hundred thirty one crore rupees, one thousand three hundred uh, thirty one crore rupees, six hundred one crore already done till thirty one December. Seven thirty is the balance and this uh, seventy four which we have considered for the quarter for twenty four. Four sixty five is the number which we are considering for twenty five. And 196 crore is the balance which from 25, 26, or 27, say accordingly when Chark and uh, projects are quoted, it is declared. So this is about equity, and as far as execution is concerned, for sure, we are looking at this, uh, uh, say, uh, current year to be closed at around, say, 5,000 to 5,200, that is rough number. And um, for 25, we are keeping our guidance about 6,000 crore. Okay, thanks so far, and... What is your targeted capex for FI 2425? Uh, uh, capex would not be a big uh, number for the subsequent years. Capex hardly would be in the range of 75 crore rupees. And this year? Sorry? Uh, FI 24? Yes, this year already has been done. Nothing has uh, more to be added. So almost like you have done more than 100 crore for time this time. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, sir. I have more questions. I will come back in there. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sarvesh Gupta from Maximal Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, sir, just to confirm, so this year we are expecting 6,000 crore order inflow. And uh, what should be the expectation for the next financial year, FI25? Uh, sure, I think uh, for this current year, so what we have initially has uh, guided are also 8,000 crores to be added. And uh, uh, if we uh, are at that stage where nothing say, big has being achieved as far as awarding is concerned uh, across infrastructure, especially NHA and uh, higher projects are concerned. So we believe that uh, whatever uh, bidding pipeline they are having post this uh, election, there will be a lot many projects uh, as an opportunity would be available to us. So with that, we are expecting about, say, eight to 10,000 crores being added next year. Understood. And just to confirm on the number for railways, so you said HAM EPC 18-19%. Highway EPC is 13, uh, EPC is 13, 14 percent, then railways are at what margin, sir? Yeah, almost similar, which we are keeping for EPC highway, that is around 13 percent. We are keeping the same number. Okay. So, with this mix change, do you expect the overall margins to come down because we are getting much more in railways? No, it's not that big number of railways. It's uh, just around 18, 20 percent. And uh, for highway also, EPC project, which we were doing earlier, 
was constituting this much. It is a replacement of NHI EPC projects, uh, or rather highway EPC project by railway projects. So the margin definitely would not be impacted much. Understood, sir. And, and sir, now if I look at your overall PNL, so of course we have maintained um, broadly maintained the beta margin. If we look at nine uh, nine months and all, but uh, what is happening is below the EBITDA, you know, we are using maybe much more of our own equipment. So that is, you know, we are paying less to maybe on the lease side, but then you know all those costs are hitting us on the depreciation and interest, and those have increased a lot. Uh, much more than revenue growth, 50-60% growth. So, because of which the overall PAT margin, PAT is not increasing, maybe 7-8% and this quarter would be flat YOY or 2-3%. So, you know, despite a very healthy growth, 17-18% on the top line, it's not impacting our bottom line. So, how do you see that, sir? I think uh, the PAT is uh, at the standalone level, you can see the PAT is around same. 9.5 to 10 percent. With that, uh, whatever interest outflow is there, it's now stable. Say, there's a percentage you can see last two, three years, interest not uh, increasing to that extent. And the depression definitely in the recent quarters has been increased. But for sure, I think uh, it's a part of cash accrual. So we don't believe, uh, we don't see any challenge as far as PAT is concerned. It would be in the range of about 10 percent, and it can even go up to 11 percent in the coming quarters. So going forward, our finance cost, let's say as a percentage of revenues, etc., do you expect these costs to normalize further or, I mean, this is the new normal, uh, how do you see it? Because this has increased okay. almost 70% uh, on a YOY basis. Finance cost is roughly, it's uh, roughly finance cost is carrying about uh, 15 crore rupees. And this per quarter, so if we are talking 60 to 65 crore rupees of finance cost, which is likely to be stable, and I think we want to be increased. Way. Only depreciation, which has now, uh, earlier it was 25 hour crore rupees per quarter, now it has gone up to 36 to 38 crore rupees. So, which is a big number, but definitely it's a, with a, uh, coming in the coming years, the capex is not going to be at that high level. Okay, so this is not driven by any change in our model as such, wherein now, you know, we are doing more of these equipments on our own because of which. Even while seeing lower margins, we are, uh, you know, maintaining EBITDA but falling in terms of the bad margins. No, no, nothing has been changed. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, all the best for the coming quarters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mehul Mehta from Nuama PCB. Please go ahead. Good morning, team. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, we have been exploring pros uh, possibility to bid for underground metro rail projects. So, has there been any progress in terms of JV with uh, any organization? We already have tied up, but in the, uh, as of now, see, we could not see any project where this could be explored. We already have tied up as, as about the tunnel project, uh, uh, for metro tunnel projects, rather. But for sure, we are not very uh, aggressive as far as with the coming opportunities in highways and the, in railways or in railways, even high speed density network corridor to be developed where the barrier construction and the DFCC corridor to be constructed. So we are keeping this. Uh, but not very aggressively. As far as you have been uh, focusing on, I mean, maybe like, you know, go on railway and road projects, but in metro, uh, say, like, you know, if we look at, like, you know, out of operational metro network of about 800 kilometers and currently about 650 kilometers under construction, would you be sharing who are the major players, kind of? That's so definitely we have seen the LNG to a very high level and Che Kumar is there, the NASCOMs, and then uh, ITD, so so they are the one, uh, say five seven uh, or the big numbers. Uh, they, they, are, they are having some seventy percent of the entire metro construction. Okay, and say like you know, out of the proposed network of about thousand kilometer, like you know, are uh, there new players entering, or like you know, to be like you know, the similar players like you know who have been so far like you know in this like you know segment. 
we measure metro projects mostly the capex being done uh, for the casting yard and, and uh, everything so in these uh, cities where they already they are uh, set up having the capex set up so they would be having uh, uh, at least the uh, uh, advantage of taking this opportunity but for sure and the upcoming tier 2 cities like agra is talking of nagpur even kanpur and there are many more cities uh, the metro uh, bhubaneswar uh, to be very specific so there i think uh, the opportunity lies where uh, the players like ig the other players will, uh, the company would be interested Right. Sure. Uh, another question is in relation to working capital cycle. If we look at F Y F Y twenty three end, we had about twenty three days working capital cycle, net working capital cycle, and currently it is at about thirty four days, and which has been mainly driven by five fifty one days of inventory cycle. So is it like you know that going forward we can see like you know this reducing or like you know we should continue with like you know, maybe about thirty plus days. Okay, from the start of this last three four years, we have seen the trend of about say 35 watt days. So it's for not uh, crossing 40 limits. So 30 to 40 days is the ideal one where we have seen the inventory gone going high. Because uh, if you see, you can see this is the current uh, months in these months uh, high construction is at a very high pace. So because of that, the inventory is uh, a bit high. But otherwise, the inventory uh, more or less would be around. Uh, you can see of the top line uh, around uh, eight to ten percent of the inventory would be there, not more than that. Okay, but as far as like you know, this FY23 was an aberration in terms of 23 days of working capital cycle. So it would be coming back to the same 30 or 35 days. This is a uh, normal trend for the working capital. So because of some unbuilt and because of some data receivable like SPV. So the, at the end of December, so we have not taken the funds from SPV from the lenders to SPV and to EP paid to EPC. So that is where the SPV let us gone high. Okay. Thanks. I'm done. Okay. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference please limit your questions to two per participant should you have a follow up question we will request you to rejoin the queue thank you the next question is from the line of parani vijay kumar from avendus park please go ahead yeah uh, good afternoon sir uh, you had uh, mentioned in your uh, opening remarks that you are looking to diversify also into uh, solar projects can you uh, highlight uh, what are our target projects uh, and what are our scope of work that we are trying to uh, do here in the solar uh, the renewable uh, energy uh, government focus is very specific in the state of rajasthan which is the best state uh, to set up so we have seen we have explored some of the project uh, in kusum uh, yojana which is not big projects are there very small projects where the tariff is good and power purchase agreement with the government is uh, being done so uh, not going very aggressively taking some opportunity in that uh, project where uh, the doing epc at a g only a level only rather than getting it done through any other contractor so this is basically start as well with the learning and doing with a say, secure model of where the tariff and uh, uh, is good and the uh, power purchase agreement being executed with the government only okay so as uh, uh, as a capacity of a developer you mean like we will be uh, building these oh, projects as I a developer we would be entering we would be entering not only into epc we would be entering with the as a developer but not very high value projects very small to start with that would be roughly around say 100 or crore per project but later on within 6 months if you feel like 100 or crore we can be added so this is where uh, we are looking into this opportunity okay uh, my second question is on uh, in your opening remarks you mentioned uh, that this bharat mala is being converted into vision 2047 uh um, so what is the uh, progress of this what is the thought process of the ministry behind this uh any more uh, details that you can provide like you mentioned uh, there's a 35000 kilometers and then there's another 50000 kilometers so if you can elaborate more on this see the government is looking into 2047 as the year where 100 years mark for the uh, this independence so with that i think government uh, vision statement where the every organization it can be highway to railway 
So all has been given the task of consolidation of infrastructure development or uh, to be done in this uh, 25 years, 23 years. Ahead. So with that, uh, we believe uh, that the coming opportunity would be as earlier we were looking at 28, 29 or 30 rather, this highway opportunity would be dried up, likely to be dried up rather. So now uh, they are given this uh, indication that uh, highway also would be there in our cars. And where we are expecting, say, 50,000 kilometers of the existing initial highway to be upgraded and some 35,000 kilometers to be awarded on the access control greenfield highway. So this is a vision document where detail of the project has already been excised. And uh, I think it will take another six months or one year down the line when the clarity would be uh, more clarity would be given, uh, rather available. And then I think bidding in the coming uh, year, say 24, 25, would be on in these projects only. Okay, understood. Uh, little long-term uh, kind of opportunity. Okay, uh, got it. Thank you for answering my questions and uh, all the best for the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Vaibha Shah from JM Financial Limited. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity. So when do we expect to receive the proceeds from for the fourth asset? So likely to be by end of this financial year, by March, because this is already at the advanced, in the advanced stage with lenders and NHI. So within next 10, 15 days, we will be likely to, uh, like, we will like, likely to get this uh, NOC. And then another 10, 30, 30, 35 days for uh, uh, completing an entire formality. And the receipts we received for the three assets. So where is the money being used? Because our debt is reduced by around 127 crores on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. And cash is flattish. So cash definitely is for around 70 or crore rupees. We can see uh, that as the payment, like it we, which we like always receive from our SPV through lenders funding. So which we definitely keeping a cash at the company level, we are again looking into this particular arrangement where we will not be taking the let's say loan from the lenders from S to SPV and SPV in turn to EPC. So this is one way we are looking. Again, we have now uh, looking into some part of uh, this fund to be used for an advanced payment procurement. Advanced uh, procurement to, from the vendors. So we are getting uh, around, say, 1.5% uh, cost uh, benefit where the cash discount is being there. So there are a few uh, other models which we are exercising where this cash uh, with the company can be used and definitely uh, all OD limits or such uh, 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 only current account definitely would not be there. We would not be keeping our fund into this current account. But then the OD limits would be all uh, say free from utilization use. So currently, where it is sitting on the balance sheet? Sorry. Currently, where the cash is sitting on the balance sheet, the receipts we got from the monetization. Majorly, which I have seen, are 270 or crore rupees, which are likely to be, which, which are kept as a debtor receivable from SPV. So this okay. we have done intentionally. We have not taken uh, in SPV. So we do, this would be reducing the interest during construction to the SPV. Okay, got it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Vishal Periwal from IDBI Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, thanks uh, for the opportunity. Uh, on the railway side, sir, the, the two uh, different sort of work that we are doing. So relatively, where do we find the margins to be better? Uh, that is for uh, station redevelopment or the new line that we are constructing for uh, Bilaspur? No, Bilaspur is totally different project. Bilaspur project is uh, all wider construction. See, it's in the backwater of a uh, dam where the station and uh, the survivor being developed. These railway projects are all different. 50 odd kilometer broad gauge, uh, new line to be uh, laid of 700 odd crore. This is, this is a central railway project. In South Central Railway projects, 447 crore. That is the uh, uh, second line or say the third line being developed for the, as a broad gauge line. And these are all uh, new lines or uh, uh, the lines which existing, nothing is to be uh, touched. Okay. No, but then uh, if if I look at order book, so the Kanpur uh, work that is there, uh, station de redevelopment, and then there's the Blaspur work that is there. So relatively, where do you find the margins to be better? Like, 
on uh, Kanpur definitely as we have done as we are doing our all pre bed uh, post pre bed to post bed uh, comparison design post design so we are seeing the good margins are there in Kanpur railway station if we compare with railway project of Bilaspur okay 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 and then uh, <clears throat> will it be possible to give some number like relatively how much better it is any ballpark range that you like to share so right now i'm not hanging handy with me okay okay sure sir yeah that's all for my side thank you thank you thank you very much the next question is from the line of pratik pandari from art ventures Please go ahead. Hi, good morning, sir. Hello. Yeah, good morning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to know as to the exact number of order flow inflow in the Q3 FY24, the recent quarter. What was the exact amount of order inflow? In Q3, hardly there was any order being there. Only NTPC uh, 37 crore rupees of new order. There was some variation. uh some change of scope variation being awarded by the authority like in ganga we have received variation of 100 crore rupees in some of the projects of nhi also they have uh, variation which uh, that's why and the price escalation also has contributed to the top line 130 or 40 rupees of uh, uh, price escalation also has been there okay so if i if i talk about 9 month fy24 i mean like uh, this current year up till december what was the order inflow uh, in the 9 months in the 9 months hardly there were order about 75 crore rupees uh, all both ntpc small project but the variation orders of about 300 crore rupees being passed by of uh, various authorities so that is one so you can see all compared 12700 at the start of the year and uh, say having uh, say 6000 uh, 9600 at the end of this year so the difference is almost 500 crore rupees This is so like, the final collection what was the what was the major reason for no order inflows in the you know 9 months fy24 and it is all uh, where i think uh, say nha awarding and uh, say uh, highway awarding and other sectors uh, because of the state election also not many, much awarding was done okay so there is no awarding from uh, the the organization right yes yes, yes. okay okay thank you Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Shravan Shah from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity again. Okay. Uh, sir, this uh, two uh, new uh, railway uh, project. Uh, when we will be getting the appointed date? One of the railway projects, uh, LOA, has been received two days back only. Seven hundred dollar uh, dole dole project. So, which uh, we are checked upon with the, with the authority said that within I think three months the likely that the appointed date would be declared because the land is available with them. And the second project, definitely, it's a, a, a third line to be developed along with the existing line. The ROW is available. So, within very soon we would also be getting the appointed date. So, probably by April, both the projects appointed date uh, likely to be declared. Oh, okay. So, by April, both the uh, appointed. And sir, uh, uh, if you can uh, again repeat the uh, equity infusion. So 74 crore we will be infusing in fourth quarter, uh, and in the in the FR 25 we said 465 crore. Yeah, that we have kept a 465 crore. We're looking into the both Jharkhand projects requirement and all five projects which are uh, or rather six projects where the balance equity requirement would be there. So that uh, 70 key from 55 60 percent already invested. Uh, taking to 75%. Okay, and 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 so total balance requirement is 730 odd crore uh, uh, to, uh, till today. 604 crore we have invested. 730 crore is to be invested. Correct. Correct. Okay, and uh, in the in the fourth quarter when we uh, when we'll uh, receive the entire monetization the fourth uh, uh, project the second tranche. So, how much uh, gain uh, uh, post tax uh, we will be? Uh, I think uh, what you are saying that what 140 odd crore rupees which we will be getting and 59 crore, 60 crore rupees which is lying in the escrow already being uh, say effect has already been considered in the balance sheet. So, there is one fourth uh, project transaction to happen, and for sure I think whatever tax is there. As far as the concern and EPC is there, uh, this is a calculation to be done once the transaction being done. 
Okay, and 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 debt level will will further reduce from here on. Yeah, definitely. We are keeping that about the debt level would be roughly around say 400 crore rupees from now, and, uh, and uh, debtors and uh, but the same majorly effect would be in the debtors. Okay, okay. So uh, as you mentioned that you have kept the money, uh, whatever we have received to to fund the SPV, uh, so that the interest during construction is is on on the lower side. So SPV debtors are on the higher side. Uh, uh, so that's the major reason. But uh, broadly, in terms of the working capital days, it will be back to the normal. 30 to 35 days will will come back to the normal level. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Jiten Rushi from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for taking my question. So my first question is on the, uh, as you said, during nine months, uh, you had budget for almost 30,507 per project, of which we were able to give 1,200 per option. So our wind ratio was almost 3.5%. And uh, now uh, we are targeting, there is a 14,000 per uh, open pipeline, which the bids are yet to open, and another 60,000 per which are going to be in the roads, and 6,000 crores in uh, ra railways further. So almost 80,000 crores is kind of a bids which we will be, which we have bidded like 14,000 plus the new bids. So with this 4% uh, win ratio, the inflows can be anything between 3,500 3 crores. So then, uh, as you said, like we are targeting around 5,000 crore of more inflows. So, do you believe that uh, we will be going aggressive to win the project? I understand your question. I understand your question. The build strike ratio normally depends, uh, say, uh, sector to sector. In railway, we have bidded, we are bidding many projects rather than only selected projects. In the highway, we usually are taking a few selected projects to be bidded, and that's why the build strike ratio is better uh, in highway projects. So how much? So basically, out of 60, so you will no, say uh, in the past years we have seen that is roughly at about six to eight percent. Six to eight percent is the ratio on this thing, highways. Yeah. The railways have been low because of our uh, qualification criteria sometimes. So it doesn't add. Only uh, you are not targeting any project in the water segment like you are talking about the JGM scheme. Right now, right now, these are the two state governments which are already now in place. Uh, state of Rajasthan, where uh, almost uh, 15,000 crores of water which could not be awarded earlier uh, by the earlier government, where now they are looking at this opportunity. But definitely, we are looking into these two state government, MP and Rajasthan, and third UP, where we would be adding these water sector projects, looking for for that. But definitely, for not this year, we are not keeping anything because hardly two months are there. We are not. Into this, yeah. Sorry. So next year, how much you are expecting from NB and UP in terms of bids for KGN project? Total uh, at HG level, highway and uh, all other projects? No, no, sir. You said that water segment, Jalji and Mission Scheme, Rajasthan can yeah, come up. We would be looking. We would be looking to add at least 500 to 1,000 or crores of uh, our single or two project. Okay. Renewable is going to. You are we will be setting up a solar. Uh, small park and we'll be supplying it to the under the Kosovo scheme uh, to the farmers, the solar farm. Is that understanding that? No, 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 no. It's not that. Kosum Yojana is where the power purchase agreement, the government is taking back the power and it's, they are being installed near to the grid substation uh, already in operation, uh, say, with all the uh, Bigli board. So nothing of that here, they will supply to the, uh, but definitely government subsidy scheme is there in that, central government scheme is there. And the power purchase agreement, uh, which uh, normal, which uh, normally it's about 2.5 or 2.6 uh, rupees uh, unit. Here it is 3.5 or around 3.5. So there's a, uh, a good gap in that particular margins are good. 3.5 is a very good number. Actually. That's the last question on the BOT front. As you said, sorry to interrupt, you. Jitin. Uh, I requested you to rejoin the queue. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I request all the participants to limit your questions to two per participants. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Dixit from Hame Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, 
Yeah, hi sir. Thanks for taking my question. So sir, my question is that on the consolidated level, what is the reason for dip in the margins in this quarter? What margin? The dip in the margins for this quarter in quarter three of by twenty four. Dip in the margin in the consolidated. Yes sir. So I already yes, have, uh, explained. So this is the effect because of these three projects. Well, uh, say it's a. Uh, to be very specific in Goa and Sona, there is a negative uh, revised margin been there majorly because uh, the entire uh, say four ham projects where this uh, effective 1.55 times of the investment which we have done. So in SPV, whatever and margin we are builder in the uh, last two three years, we are major effect in Goa and Sona, but uh, see it's, it's, otherwise they are all same. Okay. And so for four lakh by twenty four, how much EBITDA margins are we seeing? For uh, this uh, current year. Yes, sir, for current year. Uh, you are talking about absolute number or a percentage? No, sir, percent. Percent would be roughly around say as we are doing it, prime thirteen point nine. Roughly, it would be in that range only. Okay, fifteen percent at least. Yes. Okay, sir. And sir, our major order book is in the road segment. So, are we uh, targeting to diversify in more segments? Which sector? Sir, so our majorly order book is in the road segment. So, are we are we diversifying in more like water metro projects? Already, we have given the guidance that this year we are having 18 percent of the orders, balance orders of railway. So other than roads only, and keeping that in line, 25, 26, we would be roughly targeting at about 25 to 30 percent orders from the other sectors other than highway. Okay. Okay. Great solve from us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. The last question is from the line of Sarvesh Gupta from Maximal Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, so just one question. So going forward, uh, what? So out of your interest cost, uh, let's say 20 crores this quarter. What would be the overall split that we should assume between uh, you know financial charges which are levied by the banks and the interest cost? So what would be the split that we should assume uh, in general? And secondly, going forward, given that you have a, let's say around 400 crores net net debt. on the balance sheet post the receipt of uh, sale proceeds then uh, what should be the interest cost uh, on a yearly basis the interest cost definitely for this particular quarter as we have seen so there are a few quarters where the bank charges and commissions are bit high in this quarter 3 and quarter 4 normally it, uh, in the past also we have seen this trend but uh, overall if you see the interest portion in uh, 22 crore rupees of uh, this quarter Is around the uh, interest on OD and it's allowed 10 to 11 crore rupees interest by the client from the client advance. <laughs> BG commission and these uh, bank charges are bit high, so this is a uh, uh, very high about say 6 crore rupees. So now looking into that, the uh, entire trend once we receive this, uh, uh, roughly around 65 odd crore rupees on year or year basis would be the trend of interest and including charges, bank charges, so that's in fee, BG commission, etc. Of which around 60% should be the financial cost, and remaining would be the charges. Roughly, you can consider that. Understood, sir. And on depreciation, should we? We are at 37 crore on a standalone basis per quarter. So, what should be sort of the going forward rate we should assume? This number is coming around 140 crore rupees, which is likely to reduce because the capex what we have done in last year and this current nine months. So the very high capex being done. So this cap, uh, the coming years, this capex is good enough to take the 15 to 20 percent year-on-year growth, just the 15 to say, say 70, 75 crore rupees of net, uh, say capex to be done in the uh, next subsequent two, three years. So this is going to likely to come down uh, significantly, not in these uh, two, three quarters, but definitely later on. Understood, sir. Thank you, and all the best. <laughs> Thank you very much. As there are no further questions, I will now like to hand the conference over to management for closing comments.
So I extend my gratitude to everyone who contributing uh, contributing their experience, uh, expertise to the discussion. We value our presence on today's call and trust that we have addressed to all your queries. Should you have any additional questions, please feel free to contact our investor relation advisor, Go India Advisors. Uh, thank you for your active participation once again. Thank you.